Uh, Мы в эфире. Okay. So, hello everybody. Uh, I would like to say thank you that you join our online workshop. Today we are going to talk about uh, LiDAR data processing and we would like to show our latest product. Uh, the latest product which was uh, designed uh, by Topadron company. And uh, this one product is a uh, very lightweight and very accurate LiDAR solution. And it's, of course, it's affordable uh, in the price. And uh, we have two solutions right now based on Velodyne uh, heads, and we will talk about it later. And we will show some data processing cases, and uh, uh, we will show uh, data processing workflow, we will show some results. And if you have any question, we will be glad to answer, uh, answer them. Uh, so first of all, I would like to ask, uh, uh, do you hear me and uh, do you see me? Uh, if uh, this, uh, the quality of the video is okay, and if it's okay, you just uh, write a message, uh, and uh, we will uh, we will continue. Maxim, could you, uh, do we have any messages or questions? Uh, not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's eight users. I see here. Okay. Okay, good, uh, super, and uh, uh, we will start our presentation about uh, about LiDAR data processing and about our new solution. Uh, let me start presentation. Okay, uh, Maxim, could you help me to, to launch presentation? Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start. Uh, so, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, LiDAR uh, survey and uh, especially to to provide our clients uh, uh, affordable solution in the price. Uh, we designed uh, the lightest uh, LiDAR on the market, uh, based on Velodyne head. Right now, our solution has two options. It's uh, first one, it's uh, Velodyne uh, VLP32, uh, and the weight of the LiDAR is uh, a little bit more than one kilo, just one kilo and uh, 200 grams. And another one solution, you can look at, uh, at the screen uh, here, uh, by, uh, it's already installed on Matrix uh, 200. It's, uh, uh, Velodyne uh, 16, and uh, the weight of this LiDAR is less than 800 grams. So, uh, you can easily install this uh, LiDAR uh, on uh, Matrix 200 and Matrix 300. Why? Why we, d uh, we decided to design such lightweight solution? Why? Because you know that uh, the, uh, the most uh, Advanced drones, which provides, uh, uh, which uh, which provide uh, safe flight and uh, uh, which ha uh, have a lot of uh, obstacle avoided systems. These drones are Matrix 200 or Matrix 300. So uh, it has a lot of uh, Matrix 200 or Matrix 300. Uh, they both have have a lot of. Uh, Autopilot options, which allows you to uh, to make safe flights, and uh, which allows you to uh, to fly easily with uh, with mission planning software, with uh, obstacle avoidance system, with waterproof motors and body, and uh, with uh, uh, with a lot of advantages. And I think uh, there is no uh, there is no any another one. So. Uh, uh, so, advanced solution for for flying with a drone, and uh, I think Matrix 200 and Matrix 300 is the best option. Why? Because it's it's it can be uh, packed in a small box. You can take uh, you can carry in a, uh, you can take it like uh, for for flights for for plane, and uh, there is no any problem uh, with the batteries and so on. And it has only two batteries in comparison with Matrix 600 and Matrix 600. It's um, a, a much heavier, uh, uh, much heavier drone, and uh, you, you couldn't 
uh, you couldn't uh, prepare it by one person and it's very difficult to take it in an airplane and you need to charge six batteries at the same time and you need to buy uh, five, uh, four or five sets of batteries for Matrix uh, 600, for example. So you will have a lot of expenses for batteries and you will have a lot of uh, issues with the charging of batteries and so on. But for Matrix 200 or Matrix 300, you don't have such uh, problems and you can fly easily and you can arrange flights easily and you need just two two batteries per one flight and uh, it, it is much it, it is much e easier to charge batteries and it is much cheaper to buy batteries and so uh, I think it's the best solution for mapping and as a result we decided to uh, design our solution to fit especially Matrix 200 or Matrix 300 as, as soon as it is stable and very easy to use. And uh, uh, now we are going to talk about uh, LiDAR. So inside our LiDAR, we have very precise, a very advanced IMU. It is a modern I IMU inside, and it is integrated with uh, two frequency genesis receiver uh, produced by our company. And it is integrated with IMU, with genesis receiver, and with LiDAR. As a result, you can easily process data, and you will achieve accuracy between three or five centimeters definitely. I will show you some results of our survey from different parts. And you can, and what is the main advantage of LiDAR system? First of all, you may, uh, you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can carry out projects in a forest area and you can easily measure terrain area under, under the trees or under the uh, tall grass, for example. And another one advantage, advantage is uh, um, time of data processing. You will, uh, you will process much faster data. Uh, you will process data much faster in comparison with the uh, original photogrammetry techniques. You know that uh, Topadron company uh, provides solution for photogrammetry. Uh, data processing and provides some upgrade, uh, uh, some uh, equipment which can be installed on DJI drones to convert it to a survey machine. For example, for Mavic 2, uh, for Mavic 2 Pro or for Mavic Mini, for Phantom 4 Pro, for Matrix uh, 200 or 300. And before the uh, before the time, this time, we tried to uh, to create a affordable solution for UIV survey and mapping uh, for photogram uh, where, where we use photogrammetry techniques. And we work together with uh, Pix4D and Pix4D approved our data processing workflow and uh, we achieved very good accuracy. But the main problem was when we performed projects in the forest areas, uh, we couldn't achieve a good accuracy because we couldn't achieve a good accuracy in the terrain. We couldn't uh, classify uh, point cloud to, to get precise data, data over the terrain. And as a result, we decided to, uh, to invent, to design and to create and to produce an uh, uh, affordable solution for LiDAR survey and mapping. Quick one question. Mm -hmm. uh, what are two sensor setups you offer? Uh, what? Excuse what me? are two sensor setups you offer? Okay, it's a very good question, and uh, uh, I will answer it after uh, after a few minutes. And it, uh, I have a special uh, part of my presentation about uh, uh, installing uh, uh, lidar on the drone and uh, about everything. Okay, so uh, right now we will talk about uh, uh, technical. Uh, technical uh, options and uh, we will talk about technical characteristics of our solution. So, as I already said, you can install this LiDAR easily on Matrix 200 or Matrix 300 and uh, a flight time of uh, uh, Tapadron LiDAR 100 Lite uh, is uh, 28 minutes when you install uh, this LiDAR on uh, Matrix 200. And it will be 35 minutes of flying if you install it ma on Matrix 300. And you can easily survey one square kilo kilometer. And uh, you will achieve accuracy, as I already said, three or five centimeters. And uh, uh, walking range of, of the LiDAR system is 100 meters uh, for uh, 
LiDAR 100 light or 150 meters or 200 meters for LiDAR uh, 200 uh, uh, ultra. And uh, with the matrix 200 or matrix 300, you can fly easily with a high uh, wind speed up to 20 meters per second. Uh, and um, uh, we already tested, and uh, it, it's very uh, stable drone. And uh, uh, our, the weight of our equipment allows you to use uh, all, capaci uh, all capabilities of these drones. And about uh, we. We decided to create different options uh, to mount uh, a LiDAR on the drone. First of all, you can install ma uh, LiDAR on the battery, uh, uh, under the battery of the drone. And in this case, uh, you can use uh, uh, standard uh, DJI camera, for example, X X4S camera together with LiDAR to get a point cloud colorized uh, with, uh, from RGB camera. And it's very simple. And why we decided to uh, to create such solution? Uh, why? Because uh, there is only one camera right now which can be integrated with the DJI system and which can be uh, involved in a mission planning uh, uh, software and mission planning process. It is, and this camera has mechanical shutter and it, it is a perfect camera for photogrammetry. It is a X4S camera. We, we um, uh, we we provide upgrade for this camera in order to connect this camera to the lidar system through a special uh, uh, special cable. As a result, lidar uh, GNSS receiver installed inside of the lidar will catch photo events, and during the uh, future uh, data post processing, you will get precise trajectory of the flight, and uh, you will get precise uh, coordinates of each image and you will process it together with LiDAR data. So it's very simple and I will show you. As a result, uh, you can upgrade your already owned uh, matrix, already exist matrix 200 to light, uh, to, uh, for LiDAR survey. And you will, you will be able to survey in a forest area or you will, you will speed up uh, the process of surveying. In, in our experience, the time uh, you, you will receive point clouds 10 times faster in comparison in uh, with photogrammetry after one flight you will receive point cloud within one hour it's uh, it's definitely usually we, uh, we process data and we receive point cloud after one lidar flight after 30 minutes but uh, i would say that uh, after one hour you will receive point cloud you will process point cloud and, and you will receive point cloud already classified uh, 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 in order to to get terrain uh, level uh, after one hour of, of the, uh, after the flight, this photo photogrammetry it's totally impossible. Uh, impossible. Usually you create photogrammetry mission, and after that you need to wait uh, one night or few days to 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 create uh, terrain uh, to or to create three dimensional model. Okay, so first option to install uh, LiDAR, it's insto uh, we provide special mounting kit to be installed on battery, uh, batteries, uh, under the battery of, uh, of the drone. And uh, uh, the, camera of uh, the camera of the drone will be integrated with the LiDAR. Another one solution, you can install LiDAR uh, on, um, on export. Uh, you may install LiDAR uh, uh, to, to the Skyport, uh, to the DJI Skyport, and it, it is very easy to install. Just uh, uh, just install it like a like any DJI camera, and it will receive power, and it will be connected to the system, and everything you need, you will install it within few minutes. <laughs> Hi, and. Uh, and uh, this one, it's very important issue. Uh, you, you, you will prepare the drone within few minutes before the flight. Uh, before the flight, just uh, uh, install uh, lidar to DJI Skyport uh, export uh, to the Skyport. And uh, so you have two options to install uh, lidar on uh, on the drone. First of all, uh, to integrate with the camera or to install it to export. Uh, it's very easy. And uh, of course, uh, you can install it on Matrix 200 or Matrix 300 or Matrix 600, but 
I would suggest the best option that uh, you will use uh, Matrix 200 or Matrix 300 because, because it is more safe to fly. And uh, with using of obstacle avoided systems, uh, system, uh, uh, you will get very uh, safe flights. Okay, and uh, let's talk about uh, some uh, uh, technical characteristics of our system. Of course, we, inside of the LiDAR, we have, uh, it doesn't matter uh, which uh, uh, Velodyne head we have. Inside of the LiDAR, this part includes uh, two frequency GNSS receiver integrated with IMU. As I already said, we have very professional and very uh, advanced, uh, very modern IMU inside integrated with GNSS receiver. And uh, from any, uh, with, uh, uh, with Ultra Pack, uh, you can fly uh, with altitude of 150 or 20, uh, 200 meters. And you uh, you can make survey from this altitude with a lidar which is installed here uh, uh, with a wheel piece 16. You can fly with uh, altitude of 50 or 70 meters. And uh, survey width uh, uh, is uh, 70, uh, uh, from 70 meters altitude is 130 meters. So the uh, the corridor of your survey is 100, 130 meters. Uh, if you are using uh, 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 Topadron LiDAR 100 light uh, system. So, and uh, point density um, is uh, 150 points per square meter. It's uh, a prelim uh, preliminary calculated uh, point density. You will achieve uh, uh, much, uh, much, uh, much more points uh, or a little bit less points. It depends on the uh, structure of the terrain or it depends on the type of the objects which you survey. For example, on on, uh, on asphalt, on the road, you will receive less points if uh, road is wet and you will receive uh, more points if road is uh, dry, for example. And. Uh, um, as I already said, we created very lightweight solution, just uh, uh, just uh, less than 800 grams for LiDAR 100 and uh, uh, less than uh, 1 and, and 200, 1 kilo and 200 grams for uh, LiDAR 200 Ultra. Okay, and now we are uh, if you have any questions, uh, I will answer it and uh, let's talk uh, later about data processing and I will show you data processing for four. There are no questions right now, so mm -hmm. we can move forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the, ne the next uh, part of my presentation is uh, workflow of data processing and workflow of surveying. First of all, of course, we have uh, we need to create, uh, we need to prepare uh, for the field works, we need to um, make a mission planning, and for mission planning, I would suggest UGCS software, and it is perfect for using uh, uh, with a lidar because before flight, you need to make a calibration flight. It should be included to the same uh, mission, and it's very easy to create uh, uh, to create uh, in. Uh, in a UGCS, and you you can divide your area on a different uh, flight uh, flight roads, and you can divide for different fl uh, your area for different flight, like uh, it's shown on uh, on our screen, and uh, it's very easy to prepare the the full uh, the, the full uh, uh, survey uh, project, and you can define it in in your office, and when they go to the field. Uh, uh, if there is no any internet connection or any uh, uh, any GSM network, you can easily fly without uh, internet. It's a very good option. Uh, during our training, we show how to prepare mission planning for uh, for lidar survey, and it's very important to prepare mission carefully to provide a safe flight and to uh, to 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 ensure that your expensive equipment is uh, will, uh, is safe. And uh, I would say that uh, without special training, it's uh, very difficult to use LiDAR. 
and we we provide training on uh, online or you can visit our Switzerland office and we will provide training for surveying uh, in our Switzerland office so and, and it's, it's very important usually training lasts uh, uh, three or five days it depends on the level of, of students and we will show how to prepare a mission how to install a base station uh, how to post process GNSS data together with IMU and how to process point clouds. Okay, and uh, as I already said, uh, uh, when we prepare a mission, we go. We should go to the field and we should install a base station. As a base station, you can use any GNSS receiver which stores uh, raw Rhinox data. Or you can use your uh, uh, national survey network and just download Rhinox uh, uh, from this network uh, via internet and it's very simple. Uh, for example, for this project, which I show you, uh, uh, which I uh, which is shown uh, on the uh, on the map, we just download Rhinox files from a national survey network. It's very easy. We use the same base station which was located within 15 or uh, 20 kilometers from the flight area, and you, we can easily process data. So I will show you. Uh, so uh, in this case, you. You don't need to use your own GNSS receiver as a base station, but it's a good option to install a GNSS receiver close to, to, your, to your landing pad or something like that to, to be sure that everything is good and you just download Rhinox files after the flight. Um, um, after flights, you, you just download data from uh, LiDAR. Ah, how to prepare LiDAR for, for flying? how to prepare LiDAR for, for surveying. You just install LiDAR on, uh, on, on the drone, like it's shown here. May I, uh, Maxim, could you help me to show LiDAR? Maybe you should change the picture. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And uh, this one is an example of, in the, uh, of installation. Okay. So, you need to connect. Like, uh, uh, LiDAR to, to X4S camera and in this case uh, all, uh, all, all uh, information comes from the camera to the LiDAR uh, to catch uh, precisely photo events and uh, additionally we get power from DJI drone for the LiDAR as well through this cable it's very simple so uh, it's one part of the installation. Another one, uh, and you just install LiDAR to be battery side of the drone, and uh, there are special holes for, for screws, and it's uh, prepared by DJI, so you don't need to make additional holes or so, something like that. Uh, and what you need to uh, just install LiDAR, just install camera, connect uh, cable, and just switch on the power, nothing else. After that, uh, LiDAR has, uh, um, after that you should look at uh, 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 LED lights. It shows uh, the status of LiDAR initialization. And as soon as the LED, uh, uh, LED light shows us that everything is ready, you can fly. So nothing else. And uh, after flight, you just install here, SD, uh, install SD card here inside. And you download uh, data from uh, from the flight. Nothing. Uh, so it's very easy. And uh, with, uh, in order to survey with lidar, you can uh, uh, you can hire any professional pilot. And it's very simple. You don't need to be a surveyor to make a survey with lidar. You need to be a surveyor to process data. And uh, this is a uh, very important issue that uh, for lidar survey you need a professional pilot which provides you safe flights and prepare all mission planning and so on and uh, you will be sure that your equipment will be safe and you need a professional survey to process data or you need to be a uh, to be uh, to become professional survey just uh, visit our training course and uh, uh, you know that a lot of our clients already uh, already visited our training courses and received enough information to survey in, uh, and to create the uh, hugest projects. For example, uh, for example, uh, Antarctic survey or Cambodia survey, any parts. Uh, in Switzerland, we, we have a lot of clients. So, uh, 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 can you please uh, tell to our users uh, again about the maximum altitude of the flight? 
for well, both solutions. Oh, okay, uh, with the LiDAR 100, you should fly within 50 or 70 meters altitude. With the LiDAR 200 Ultra, you can fly within 150 or uh, 170 meters altitude. So uh, it uh, depends on the uh, LiDAR working range. It, it depends on Veladyne head. Uh, and uh, another question, uh, is it necessary to initialize uh, IMU before the flight? Uh, it is necessary to in initialize IMU during the flight. And as I already said, you need to prepare a special part of the mission uh, for uh, IMU initialization. It looks like uh, initialization of uh, compass for DJI when you uh, rotate the drone, but it should be made uh, in, in the air. And I will show some parts of this. And in UGCS, you will create this part of flight uh, automatically, and it's very easy. And I will show you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's mm -hmm. take a presentation. Are there any question arise right now? Because now I am going to, to the part of data processing. No, there's any question. Mm -hmm. No questions. Okay, uh, let's talk about data processing. As I already said, the total time range of data processing is from 30 minutes to one hour per one flight. So it's very easy to process data, and I will show you. So within uh, for me, it's very easy, and uh, I will process data for, from one flight within uh, 30 minutes easily. Uh, as a result, you can process all your data uh, in one day. So you, if you make a survey during the whole day, uh, during the whole range of the day, for example, you made eight flights, ten flights per day, and you will survey uh, uh, 1,000 hectares, it means 10 uh, square kilometers per day, you can easily survey. Why? Because LiDAR doesn't, uh, doesn't require sunlight. And you can fly in the night uh, as well, but without camera, but you will receive uh, LiDAR data. And uh, uh, you can easily process all data, uh, all data during uh, the flights. And after, after, after you will receive whole data set, which can be sent to your, uh, for your, uh, uh, to your office to process data, to create maps. Uh, so it's, it's much faster in comparison with uh, photogrammetry. The first date, uh, the first stage of data processing is uh, GNSS data and IMU data post processing, and uh, we would suggest to use Inertial Explorer right now for uh, for for GNSS data post processing together with IMU. But uh, within one month, we will launch our online service for GNSS data post-processing and IMU data post-processing. So uh, we understand that uh, the most expensive part of our solution is the software. And Inertial Explorer uh, license for one year costs a little bit less than $5,000. And I think uh, in comparison with the, with the price of our solution, it's a little bit expensive. And as a result, we decided to create our own uh, online service to post-process GNSS data together with IMU to receive precise trajectory of the flight. On the basis of this precise trajectory of the flight, you will generate point clouds using uh, top, top LiDAR software, which produced by our company, and I will show how it works. It's very easy. Just upload uh, precise trajectory and uh, uh, import uh, raw, li li raw LiDAR data, and as a result, you will generate a, a precise point cloud. And finally, you need to make strip alignment and you need to process point cloud, you need to classify point cloud. In this case, I would suggest to use LiDAR 360 uh, or uh, TerraScan, for example. Uh, and uh, it's very easy to process data and very fast to process data, and I will show you. Okay. As I already said, first issue is uh, GNSS data post-processing together with IMU. You just uh, import to the software uh, data from LiDAR, which, is, which uh, should be copied uh, from, uh, from LiDAR. And uh, uh, during our training, we will show how to do it. And uh, GNSS data post-processing together with IMU, it, uh, 
takes uh, maybe 5 or 15 minutes, no more. So it's very easy and uh, you just need to click the buttons. Uh, usually there is no any problem. And uh, uh, as uh, already as I already received question about uh, IMU calibration uh, before the flight, I already said that it should be made during the flight and now you see trajectory on my screen and uh, there is an uh, infinity sign uh, in the trajectory. And this one is a, a part of uh, IMU calibration. It should be done and it's very easy. Uh, as you can see, during post-processing, you will receive uh, precise trajectory of the flight, precise path of, uh, path, uh, of the flight. Uh, and uh, this information includes uh, position of the drone and uh, precise uh, angles of rotation of the drone. And uh, you will receive precise uh, photo events. Uh, it's uh, points on uh, it, it is a points on uh, on the road, which shows us the location of uh, of each photo. So it's uh, after that it will be used for photogrammetry processing of uh, f uh, of images, and it will be used for uh, point clouds uh, generation in uh, top uh, top lidar software. In Topolidar software, you need just to import uh, import uh, raw data from LiDAR. You need to import a precise trajectory of the flight and just uh, select uh, uh, select uh, uh, coordinate system uh, and select output coordinate system. Nothing else. And software will automatically generate point cloud. And uh, later I will show how to do it. And finally, you will receive a point cloud and you, you need to make a strip alignment and uh, you need to, post uh, to uh, classify point clouds. Uh, I will show how to do it in LiDAR 360 software. As you know, we are a reseller of this such software and uh, it's, I think it's very powerful tool and very easy to use too. Okay, let's, uh, let's start. I will show you data processing. Uh, first of all, I will show how to uh, how, how uh, gonna say data post processing looks like, and I just open one of my project. Uh, Maxim, could you uh, could you switch on my screen? I will prepare everything, and uh, if you have any question, I uh, uh, I will answer during preparation. Mm -hmm. Maxim. We have one question. Uh, what will be the pricing for your trajectory software? It will be it will be online uh, service and it will be much cheaper ch uh, than. Uh, uh, we, now we are thinking about the price and it will be much cheaper than to buy a license for the software. Maxim, maybe you have some questions because uh, usually we have uh, we receive a lot of questions from our clients uh, about lidar and maybe uh, you uh, you may uh, you you will transmit it maybe about forest uh, survey or mm. uh, what about uh, maybe uh, high grass high grass yeah it's a very good question and I will show uh, usually people say that okay you 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 make a LiDAR survey, but what about surveying in the high grass area or in the forest area? And I would say that you will definitely receive very accurate results. And just yesterday, we made a survey of, of the uh, new, uh, new construction site, but uh, there were a lot of grass uh, close to the site and we made survey and we measured some ground control points to check the accuracy of data processing in the high grass in the, in the forest area. And I will show you. It's amazing that you, you will receive uh, the same accuracy like you go to the field uh, with the pole. So it will simplify your field works. It will cut uh, your field box hours definitely. Why? Because with a, with a LiDAR you can easily survey one square kilometers and it doesn't matter which, ter uh, which cover of terrain you have. Tall grass or forest or, uh, or buildings, it doesn't matter. You will receive definitely good and accurate results. And with Matrix 200 to Matrix 300, it's very easy to prepare a mission and, uh, and it is very safe to fly. 
And now uh, just uh, I will show uh, the screen of my laptop uh, where we made uh, where we made uh, gonna say data post processing. Uh, Maxim, could you help me? Uh, I would uh, like to ask our users: uh, Is there any uh, troubles with uh, with the picture or the sound? Because I see some uh, issues on the screen. Internet. Um, I guess uh, we should uh, uh, just one minute to, so we, yeah. we will finish our uh, online uh, online translation just to arrange a good uh, signal uh, video signal okay just a few minutes. А что сразу не сказали? А, Кто-то обрабатывает что-то? Нет, нет, ничего не качается. У меня подвес. Слушай, у меня комп садится. Как-то садится. Включено. Туда ничего не, не включено. Там нету были пиратики. Саня, Я ты что не включил? Что я не включил? Да уже когда началось все. Все, да, это комп садится. Блин. Все, окей. Ну, отлично. А ты Так, все еще вернется. Ничего страшного не происходит. Да, Тормозит комп стал, что-то не понял, зачем. Не да, да, да. Другой комп. Все, супер. Нет, ничего не супер, посмотри, все то же самое. Смотри, что с камерой. А это с камерой? Я не знаю, с чем это. Ну что, оставляем как есть? Я не нашел, сборочный сейчас покажу. Ну, оставляем, что делать. Поменьше двигаться буду. Бери в один экран. Переводи на экран. Давай уменьшу просто, может да. быть, так сделаем. На экран переводи. Все, нормально. Все, так будет нормально. Да, и на экран сразу все. Угу. Теперь камера не работает. Замечательно. На экран. Нужно остановить и, зап... и запустить она. Да. Да, Вадим. Подожди немножко. Mm -hmm. Что, включаем? Mm -hmm. Все? Все за то, что... yeah. We apologize for some technical problems with the internet connection, and now we will we would like to continue our presentation, and I will show you some uh, data processing in Initial Explorer. As you can see, it's very easy to process process Genesis data. Just import here uh, lidar data, and after that you will receive a precise trajectory of the flight. It, this precise trajectory will be used for point clouds generation. How it can be done? Uh, just open uh, uh, top of LiDAR uh, software. And uh, in top of LiDAR software, I need to import uh, raw, uh, raw data from, from LiDAR. Precise trajectory created by Inertial Explorer software. Sorry. And uh, select output folder. For example, this one. After that, I will select uh, geoid model and uh, any projection which I want. Uh,
As a result, uh, after a few minutes, you will receive precise point clouds generated in your, uh, in your local uh, coordinate system. So you just need to add it to Topo LiDAR software. And a coordinate system are totally the same like in our Topo Setter software. And now I think a lot of our users use uh, this software for going to say data post-processing and in order to assign images, uh, uh, in order to assign coordinates to the images. And uh, while we process data and uh, while um, we, we are waiting for point clouds generation, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, within, uh, we already re released a new version of Topo Setter software. Now you can uh, convert coordinates not only from uh, PPK data post processing, but uh, you can just import uh, uh, text file with the coordinates and convert it to any coordinate system. And additionally, we support right now we support Tapcon, uh, Tapcon uh, TPS files, so you can import it to, in to, Topo software software, and it will be released uh, within a few days. And uh, for example, you can merge uh, different Rhinox files from the base station, and uh, we are going to increase productivity of of the software, and we are going to to add uh, multi-base station data processing and a lot of new features in the shortest period. And now we are waiting for point clouds generation in, a, uh, in our software. And just So as you can see, point clouds generation will take less than five minutes. It's very easy. And uh, just select uh, files, nothing else. Uh, and uh, after one or two minutes, we will receive a point cloud, and you you can check uh, point clouds quality in uh, in our software or use lidar 360 to to post process it. And I will check, it. and I will show you. Uh, do you have any questions while we are waiting for the data processing? No questions. So uh, uh, it, it just took us five minutes to generate a point cloud. And uh, we can look at point cloud uh, uh, in a software, for example, this one, doesn't matter, uh, just wait. Or we, we can open point cloud uh, in a, uh, LiDAR 360. In LiDAR 360, we can import trajectory paths and we can, uh, we can combine trajectory and a point cloud and we can make a uh, strip alignment and it's very easy and uh, during our training uh, I will show you and uh, it, it will take a few minutes uh, and you can see that all our flights have some uh, infinity signs uh, to to calibrate time you and after point cloud generation you will receive point cloud and you can uh, receive uh, colorized point cloud from uh, from the camera and uh, it's very easy and uh, for, and next step is to classify point clouds and to uh, to measure accuracy of point clouds and uh, i would like to share some our project which was made just yesterday it is it is a uh, it is a new a new construction site and uh, uh, this one it's a point cloud colorized from uh, these images and we can add the trajectory here to look at it. I guess so, point cloud from the top layer. Ah, yes, sure. Yes, this one. It's already generated. Uh, and it can be imported uh, to it can be imported uh, to, to LiDAR 360 or uh, or Terrascan software to process point cloud as well. So uh, uh, this software will be will be supplied uh, together with our with our equipment without without any additional price. It was uh, created especially for our lidar equipment. Okay, and now we will talk about uh, accuracy of data processing. For example, this one example, and here we have uh, some ground control points, and I can import uh, uh, trajectory. And I will use some uh, trajectory f files. I, I will import already process trajectory, but uh, 
this one it's uh, part of the trajectory it's already processed and cut a trajectory and I can import uh, um, uh, a row trajectory if you want uh, it's just uh, flight lines which was used for point cloud generation uh, and uh, we already measured some ground control points to check the accuracy and I will show you and uh, there is an area with the forest and there is an area with the, with the grass and we measure some ground, point, uh, ground control points in the high grass and in the forest area as well and uh, if we look at the road trajectory it will look like this one so we, we will use uh, we, we used these lines of flights to generate point clouds and the uh, road trajectory was like this one. We have a question. Uh, how do you remove the noise in the LiDAR data and in which set of software? Uh, we use uh, LiDAR 360 to remove re the noise of uh, LiDAR data. It's very easy. It, it just took uh, 5 or 10 minutes, uh, 5 minutes per flight. It's very easy. And uh, I will show you uh, the, the whole trajectory. This one it's uh, 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 our yesterday flight and uh, as you can see we fly with a double grid mission. Why? Because we have so uh, we have a not, not so big area but uh, uh, we just decided to fly uh, for the whole uh, battery range just to check uh, how how many uh, we will fly with the system but for the point clouds generation we just use a few lines because uh, the point clouds density is too high and uh, we can check the first of all let's check the po uh, and you can see here this one it's uh, uh, oh. It's a, a calibration of the IMU, and then we go to then we go to for survey mission, and we just use uh, cross lines uh, to generate point clouds. And uh, uh, point density from uh, and we uh, we just make uh, thirty percent overlapping in order to ensure uh, photogrammetry data processing to to create. Uh, uh, to po uh, to uh, to make air triangulation to colorize point clouds, but uh, if we don't use uh, if we don't use camera and we don't need to colorize point clouds, we can fly easily with overlapping of ten percent, definitely. And uh, let's check uh, uh, point clouds density. Uh, and point clouds density is approximately one hundred fifty or more or less, but uh, usually one hundred eighty, one hundred sixty, and uh, the main uh, sometimes less. But the the main uh, problem of lidar when you have a wet uh, area or uh, water area, it, it it couldn't be surveyed. And here uh, the, uh, there was a water here, and uh, it 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 wasn't surveyed. Okay, and uh, now uh, let's check the accuracy of our uh, let's check the accuracy of our survey. We just measure corner of uh, concrete, corner of concrete, and uh, let's uh, let's measure it. I will switch to point cloud and just uh, uh, I just left uh, ground control points, which was used only to check the accuracy, and let's check uh, the. Uh, Let's uh, define uh, coordinates of this point. Uh, it's just 176.42 uh, meters, and uh, let's define uh, let's define points close to this point. For example, this one. Uh, it's it is 176.39. So accuracy accuracy is approximately three centimeters in altitude and if we check all points here uh, for example uh, this point on the not on the concrete uh, concrete but on on the ground 
Let, let's define let's define coordinates of these ground control points. Gr ground checkpoints, not control, but checkpoints. This one uh, altitude is 175.99, and uh, let's check uh, points close to this point. 100. 175.98, so just one centimeter accuracy. It's amazing. And uh, uh, let's check, uh, okay, and now we are going to check accuracy of the data set uh, in the grass. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, move on this uh, path. And you can see that we have a grass and ground control points is under the grass. This one, for example. It's totally covered by, by the grass. But we already made automatic point clouds, uh, uh, automatic points clouds classification, and I will remove all points. Uh, I will leave only the grass. I, I will leave only only uh, only terrain, and let's check uh, accuracy of points uh, in in the, uh, this one. It's uh, okay. Let's do it once again. Okay, altitude is 178.90 and uh, close to this uh, altitude is 179.1. Uh, so different, uh, 10 centimeter difference, but uh, there is a terrain and uh, 100, 179. 178.95, so 5 centimeter accuracy. And you can see, uh, and let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's make another one test. Uh, uh, here in altitude, uh, uh, here for example in the forest area, we will check uh, uh, forest area or any, yeah, here. For example, here. Ah, this one point, uh, we already measure this point. Here. По-моему, вот это мне. Да, это померили. Вот это мне? Я только что померил. А, вот это? Ну? Нет. Окей, okay, let's check this one point. Uh, and we can see that accuracy is 8 centimeters, uh, and uh, it's already in, a, in the grass, and uh, uh, it's already covered by the grass. And uh, let's uh, make another one test. We will uh, create profile, uh, terrain profile here. We will create terrain profile of this area. And let's look uh, on the ground control points. And you can see that it is, it is located exactly in our points and uh, let's uh, uh, switch off uh, all points and uh, we just left uh, we just left uh, we just left uh, classified points and you can see that all points all points is on the terrain and uh, uh, so you can easily get very accurate results in the forest area or in the grass area like this one and you see that uh, the location of ground control points and the location uh, of uh, lidar point Let, let's measure the accuracy of the point here uh, look uh, this one point and uh, this one it's lidar point and close to this it's a uh, uh, ground control point and just uh, let's measure just uh, one or two centimeter difference it's amazing and let's look uh, on uh, on a three-dimensional model in a in a forest area here and uh, let's look at the quality of uh, point cloud under the trees and you see that we have a lot of points under the trees and if we create a profile under the trees
Yeah. And if we uh, create profile under the trees, we will uh, we, we will get very precise model of the terrain. And it's totally impossible to achieve such result with a photogrammetry, with a uh, with a common cameras such as twenty or thirty or forty megapixel cameras. It's totally impossible. And uh, as I already said, data processing is very fast. And uh, you will spend uh, less time with, uh, uh, for the survey. You will uh, ma uh, you will uh, you will survey much bigger area, and uh, you will spend less time for the field work, and we will spend less time for uh, data processing. And uh, this one example of a construction area, and here. Um, uh, there is some metal uh, metal construction uh, parts, and uh, it was surveyed as well by lidar. And let's look at uh, at this uh, section in a three dimensional model. And it is, uh, as you can see, uh, do you see on the screen uh, uh, metal parts of the construction, this one? Okay, I will do it like this one. This one. So all metal parts of the construction was surveyed as well. So, and you don't need to use any special techniques to measure it. And, uh, all power lines poles or uh, light poles was measured and all concrete uh, was measured or something like a border of the roof was measured. So everything was measured and you will create a very precise three-dimensional map uh, using, uh, uh, using LiDAR. And uh, if you have some questions about uh, construction site monitoring with the LiDAR, I will answer. And of course, you can measure. Uh, uh, value, uh, you may make uh, value calculation and uh, other uh, measurement uh, using this data. And you will combine. Uh, uh, col uh, and you may uh, embed colors uh, from photos to to the lidar data with using our equipment. So it's very easy. And very fast. Uh, if you have any question, I will answer, and then I will move uh, to the part of uh, forest survey uh, with lidar. Uh, is the sensor capable to return four or more echoes? Uh, it, uh, it has only two uh, two returns: uh, the first one and the last one. It's uh, totally enough to classify uh, terrain. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, another one example of LiDAR data, which we already received from uh, real survey projects, uh, which was made by our client. It's uh, a LiDAR survey in the forest area, and uh, it, it was a huge area survey, and uh, um, it is very dense uh, forest area, and uh, uh, just uh, I, I just uplo upload this data and uh, forest density is uh, too high and uh, I will show you like this one and uh, let's uh, create profile of this forest And, and as you can see, under this dense forest, under these tall trees with a huge number of leaves, you can easily uh, define uh, uh, terrain level. And uh, if I allowed, uh, if I switched on classified terrain, I, I will show you that it will, uh, it works. I will show you that we have a classified terrain here. These points under the under the trees, 
And let's check the accuracy of the data and I will show you some examples of this three-dimensional model. So as, as you can see, we uh, our client performed a lot of flights with using LiDAR and uh, uh, he colorized point cloud uh, using uh, RGB data from the camera. So you can easily recognize objects, roads, buildings and so on. Uh, and uh, this is example of three-dimensional model of uh, of bridge uh, which was surveyed uh, and uh, uh, this one it's a road path and uh, you, uh, all terrain are covered by trees and uh, let's look at contour lines which was created uh, uh, with using of uh, extracted terrain and all contour lines is under the trees and you can see and uh, let's check the accuracy of the data set uh, our clients measure measure it uh, some ground checkpoints and uh, these uh, points are checkpoints And uh, let's check the accuracy. Uh, we have some checkpoints measurement. Uh, this, uh, this is the uh, coordinates of the checkpoint. And let's measure some uh, LiDAR point, cl uh, point cloud to check the accuracy. Where is it? Okay, for example, this one, and uh, we have difference in uh, less than one centimeter here. Uh, and let's check accuracy in the uh, in the forest area. Uh, some checkpoints we measure it in the in the grass. And let's measure it as well. And uh, accuracy is uh, five centimeters, 46, 41, five centimeters. It was measured in the grass. So we show that the, uh, we already showed that the quality of the data and accuracy of the data is very high and uh, all, all this data can be processed during your field walks while one person, while one pilot uh, look, uh, is looking after the drone uh, the guy who is accountable for data processing can download data and process at the same time all data set and uh, let's look how uh, let's uh, look uh, at some examples how we can extract terrain in the forest areas. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, there are a lot of trees and there are a lot of uh, and uh, let's look at, at the terrain. Let's create profile of this area. And uh, as we can see, uh, it's a very dense uh, forest and uh, I will change representation to the by height to, to show more points. And uh, we can easily uh, define terrain level under the trees like this one. Uh, I will make point size bigger like this one and uh, we uh, and this one it's already created terrain uh, under these points and uh, 
and this one is the terrain level uh, and uh, under the trees and it can be easily classified and uh, this one it's uh, and uh, I will show you uh, contour lines over this area and I think it's totally impossible to to create such contour lines without lidar in or it will take you so long time for example forest area survey with a total station usually usually you can survey one or two hectares per day with a total station in the forest area but with a lidar you can easily survey 100 hectares per one flight and you will get precise terrain after one hour uh, this one it's a contour lines created on a, on the basis of lidar data classification so uh, as you can see uh, it's very precise and uh, uh, very detailed contour cloud uh, contour lines and let's look how uh, and uh, all contour lines All contour lines are placed under the trees and uh, it shows us all terrain structure. Here it's a good example of uh, such uh, structure. There is a, uh, the, uh, there was a, there was a trench, there was a trench here uh, under the trees, and uh, uh, without uh, there is a point cloud. Uh, okay, I will switch it off. Uh, I will show you how. Uh, how we can recognize trenches uh, under the trees. Uh. And uh, uh, this profile uh, uh, shows us that we measure points under, under the trees with the LiDAR data and uh, these points can be easily classified under the trees. This is the level of uh, uh, this is the level of uh, of the terrain and this is the profile of the trench of the terrain and uh, uh, contour lines looks like this one And uh, terrain structure, which is uh, uh, which uh, terrain structure which is covered by the trees and couldn't be recognized with any photogrammetric techniques, can be uh, can be recognized and can be shown in a contour lines easily. And this is a part of uh, uh, electric. Uh, uh, Electric poles, uh, electric uh, tower, uh, huge electric tower, and uh, this is a uh, electric lines which was surveyed with a, with a lidar. It was there was no any aim to survey power lines, but uh, all power lines were measured. And I will show you some examples of power lines. This one it's uh, power lines and uh, power uh, power line tower. 
So, uh, and all your data will be captured with accuracy of three or five centimeters, and you can easily survey a forest area, you will easily classify data, and uh, uh, you will do it much faster in comparison uh, with uh, photogrammetry techniques. If you have any question, I will answer, or we will finish our presentation. There is no questions. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for for your attention and we invite to our office and uh, we invite uh, you to take to take part in our online training workshop or we in, uh, in uh, we, we will provide training in, in our offices and we will be glad to supply our equipment to you thank you and the record of our broadcast will be on our channel after the end of the event okay so, bye. okay bye bye